In today's video, the soldier falls from the house. I make a scary tree from wires. Play with a watermill wheel. I paint fish. I carve a robo from a wooden block. And apply paint on stairs. Hello fellow modelers. Autumn is my favorite season because I like lovely walks surrounded by colorful leaves. I found this splendid paints of watermill landscape which I use as an inspiration and make a diorama from it. And primarily I want a stand for my Fort Maltia which I made some time ago. Ok, let's start. As usual I want to make a diorama small as possible, but this is not so easy this time. I need a house with a watermill, large tree, pot and a road with a space for the truck. But I guess in 72 scale it is not so horrible. So the dimensions are 20 to 20 centimeters. I am making the frame from balsa wood and gluing it with a super glue. The terrain is from extruded polystyrene. Of course you can use ordinary polystyrene as well, but this one is more solid and resilient. I am sculpting basic terrain shapes because I need a hole for the pot and house foundations. I am smoothing the rough cuts with a heat from a lighter. You can notice that the balsa frame is a little bit taller and that is because I will adjust and raise terrain with a layer of a plaster. Now let's make the house with a watermill foundations. I use as a carving material floral foam which selling AK in thinner thicknesses. It is very soft and fragile material so that a few cuts can make a lovely stones. And one more tip. You can push by pressure a stone to create a realistic texture. If you saw my aquatic diorama with a Churchill tank, then you already know the whole process. I tested different glues for gluing this foam. But it seems that the best is again gel super glue. I wanted to make a watermill wheel from balsa wood, but it was not a good idea. It fell apart meanwhile creating intervals. So the second attempt with the plastic boards. Exactly this material is styrene sheet if you will search it on eBay. You can buy many types and thicknesses. I use the cutting compasses for precise circles. It is almost like an ordinary compasses for geometry, but this one has a sharp blade in one end. The wheel is according to photos which I found on Wikipedia. Around the world are many types of wheels and designs. But what I know is that I need to create overshot water wheel. So something like that. I don't understand why to learn a geometry at school. But it seems handy if you are a modeler. You never know. The struts are from the spruce beams. Which are for RC models. Ok, it looks nice and if you have it, make one more. Now it only remains to add a few blades and glue the wheel together. The house is not a complete scratch build. I have from mini art kit a lot of valuable parts. I use the plastic doors, windows, roof and chimney for Santa Claus. The balsa wood is similarly soft as a crafting foam, so making wall texture and indicating separate planks is not a problem. I am making lines deeper with a pencil, but you can use any sharp object. A nail could help also. I thought that the roof would be easy, but it wasn't. The house is according to the base in angle. 
and also the roof, so make it symmetrical and correct is tricky. Therefore I created the roof truss, which works like a guide for the orientation. And this grey foam is only a template. The orange plastic boards with a texture are again from the mini art kit. You can buy styrene boards with a texture separately, they are primarily for architectural models and have many types. I'm making roof windows. The plastic is easy to bend, so the only tricky part is to cut out the correct shape. It remains to add a few lovely details, and then paint the whole house. But first I need to finish the terrain shapes. I have a favorite mixture for the ground. It contains plaster, sawdust, water and PVA glue. The PVA glue makes the whole mixture stronger. I applied on foundations masking tape. It should prevent destroying a stone texture and allow separate house after drying. If you are painstaking, you can make entire house interior, but the scene and story are not important inside, so I cover the walls with a balsa wood. I cannot forget add flume for water. I have a balsa planks for 0.5mm to 2cm. As you can see, you can make from this material a lot of details. I use it for all wooden textures, because the best imitation of the wood is wood. It remains to paint it and add water, but it looks already cute. The crafting foam seems to be relatively resilient against chemicals, but even so I use acrylic colors for sure. I am pouring into the gaps soft sand and fixing it with a matte effect PVA glue. Some PVA glues are gloss after drying, so be careful about this. I am painting shading with the oil paints. The plastic has a very soft surface, therefore I am making it less monolithic with a different wooden shades. However, the lovely touch is moss effect. I don't have any super weathering product. I use ordinary green oil paint and a little bit of thinner. Balsa wood is porous material. Consequently, you can use highly diluted oil paint as a mordant. Then with the same color, but less diluted, make shading. The painting roof is again about color modulation. I unify the surface with an orange shade and then randomly paint roof tiles with acrylic paints and different shades. The acrylic paints are resilient against enamel chemicals, thus I can apply wash directly on it. The dark wash flows into the gaps and makes excellent contours. Also, you can use it as a color filter. The orange is lovely, but it looks uniform. I think some different colors can change this feel. So the moss is again a good trick how to make a decent weathering. I 
had a problem but the hole for the water was too shallow, so I made it to the base ground. I need to prevent resin leaks, so I fix the wood with an acrylic ground texture made by Mick. It is much better than plaster. The water will be heavily cloudy, but I can make some details even so. Now the ground is done and has final shapes, therefore I am removing the excess balsa wood frame. Do not forget to fix stones and gravel with a PVA glue. When the ground is still wet, you can add some vegetation from dry moss. Actually, I have a static grass applicator for a nice grass, but the grass is fallen in autumn and is not uniform. You can simply make turfs in your fingers and push them into the applied PVA glue layer. I promised a rowboat from a wooden block. I could easily download a 3D model and print it. But why not to make it old school and from scratch? I need to draw a basic shape. It is only for obtaining symmetry. After a few minutes of ascending with a nail file, I have a hull. I am making the interior with a micro grinder. I must be careful not to make the hole through because, as I mentioned, the balsa is very fragile and soft material. In my opinion, the hole for the water looks quite dull. I need some nice details, I think a small pier could be a nice touch. I use for this purpose ordinary skewer and balsa planks. I am making a rotten wood texture with a rough metal polisher. It makes a pier older and destroyed. I decided that the boat would be partly underwater, so I fixed it with a super glue. It is a little bit overkill for the scale, but you mentioned this in my sunk KV2 diorama. You wrote me that I could add some fish to the water. Your wish is my command. It is essential to add a fin support from clear plastic if you want a fish in different water levels. I learned from my mistakes and therefore I improve my support for the resin water. So how to do it? I am making a frame from balsa wood, which is easy to fix with a pins. The magic stuff which prevents sticking resin to the frame is ordinary packaging tape. Beauty in simplicity. The last step is to prevent leaks. So do not forget to fix the frame with a clear varnish or modeling water. I use for this example Vallejo still water. The resin for water is Epox G200. It dries very slow, but you can apply a thick layer without a strong exotherming reaction. I highly recommend only one layer, because if you apply more layers, then you can see them from the side. The crucial is to mix two components properly. The drying time of the resin is 3 or 5 days, depending on the room temperature, so you have a lot of time. 
The port is not usually clean as a mountain river, so adding a dry pigment to make it cloudy is good. And mix all properly again. The pouring is my favorite part. You can remove bubbles with a lighter. I know this trick from Luke Tawan, so thanks mate. The moment of a true, will it be possible to separate the support frame? Yes, what a relief. Can you see fish? The water is too calm. I need to make it more swirling, primarily around the watermill. I use Vallejo water texture effect. It looks horrible and white, but it will become transparent after drying. At least I hope. small ways with the air from an airbrush. I make falling water from the wheel with a Vallejo still water. The process is simple. I am applying a thin layer on the plastic bag and letting it dry. The result is this nice clear film. I am gluing clear water fragments with a PVA glue. Just make it look like in motion. It looks horrible now, but it will be ok after drying. Ok, let's finish the shore of a pot. Again, the key to the details is vegetation diversity. You can start with some larger static grass turfs. If you already stole some moss from your local forest and dry it, then you can create many plants. By the way, all this stuff is 3 years old and still looks nicely green. You can nowadays buy many products for your diorama vegetation, to make it even more exciting and realistic. And they are also different dry flowers, so if you have a garden, you can cultivate many details for your dioramas. So I have a house, road, pot and some vegetation, but the most significant element is still missing, and that object is tree. I must create a complex tree trunk, and for this I found a good technique from wires. I am making a wire bundle and then entangle and unwind different branches. Good is again found some pictures of the real trees.
I know, it doesn't look now like a tree, rather like some monster from Stranger Things. But give me a few minutes, it will be better. I hope. If you need a more realistic result, then it is good to cover wires with a putty. The wire structure is only for the major branches and trunk. I use for the small branches sea foam trees. It is time consuming process, but it's worth it. I am gluing foam with a super glue. I know it looks like a giant tree model, but is only 14 cm tall. If you want to be more clever, then paint the trunk before the branches. Now it is hard not to break foam. Okay. I am spraying the tree with a glue in spray. It will nicely fix the leaves. I have the small leaves for a railroad models and made by Noch. I think they are great for our 70 scale models. I think the trunk is too bright, therefore I make it darker. The leaves should be on the top more red and orange. So I can quickly correct shade with an airbrush. I don't want to brag, but this is better than I imagine. It is funny what you can make from some wires. As you can see, the tree changes the whole feeling of a diorama. Now let's make some final details. In the water should be a lot of fallen accumulated leaves from a tree. I am fixing the leaves with a still water. The house also needs some details like stairs for example. I am making them entirely from scratch and the used material is again balsa wood. and more leaves under the tree, roof and actually everywhere. The last but not least detail are figures. They bring more life to the whole scenery and they carry a story. 
I have them from different sets and models. I modified this soldier from a German tank commander. Now is recruited like a fisherman. One figure of a mill administrator who doesn't like having a car service in the front of a yard. A soldier who apologizes and one desperate soldier staring into the engine. And with these details, I am done. I'm primarily pleased that I made my first diorama focus and autumn. All the colors are simply lovely. In addition, I learned and tested new techniques, which allows make work more manageable and enjoyable. Honestly, it should have been a small diorama for my fourth model, but it has become something more complex, and the truck is now only a secondary object. It took me a few weeks to finish it, but it worth it. In any case, I hope you learn something new and make a diorama for your models also. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time.